Hi guys, it's been a while. Got a new project for you. A couple weeks ago, Sean over at IC3D Printers contacted me and said, hey, we've got this new filament we would like you to try and put it to the test. So I said, sure, why not? And the cool thing is it's my favorite filament that they make, the PETG. Now, you know I'm a big fan of their Lulzbot Green PETG. I used it for my OpenRC car. But now they've got UV resistant PETG. It's a prototype design that they're trying to produce and he was nice enough to send me a couple rolls of this gray PETG UV resistant material in 2.85 for my Lulzbot Mini. So I said, well, we need to design something that goes outside. I've seen people make garden gnomes and, and all kinds of stuff to go outside. What can I do that's a little bit different? So I did a little research and I said, I think I could probably sketch up a birdhouse to put outside and let that sit out there. See if any animals get into it. See what the sun does to it. Let's build one. So, knowing that I have a Lulzbot Mini, I've got a six inch cube build plate to work with. So I went outside and I said, I've got a, a tall five, six foot fence outside. Let's model that fence. This is what the top of the fence looks like. I'd like to hook that birdhouse onto the top of the fence so I can move it and put it in other places. So, what we did was, let's turn on something. So, first thing I did was, I modeled a roof, okay? So this is done just by drawing rectangles, rotate, and then pivoting them around the top vertex, pivoting them outwards, and then copying them over and over again. Maybe a couple different shapes in there to get some differences. And using the pattern tool, so you can go uh, sketch rectangular pattern. You gotta be in the sketch command, but you can use rectangular pattern and take one sketch and copy it multiple times in both directions. That's how I did that. And then we went in here and after we did that, we went and designed a body. The body fits within a six by six by six cube. It's held on using three millimeter socket head cap screws. And it's kind of interesting if you do a little research, there's different hole sizes depending on what birds you want to attract. I have no clue what birds are in my backyard. So I took the average, um, and put the average size hole in there. We'll see what happens. I have no idea. After that, went in and designed up a base with screws you can put in. This allowed me to work within my build volume. Also, if something does nest in here in the winter time and leaves, we can take the roof off, we can take the bottom off, clean the whole thing out. Uh, nothing gets trapped in there. Uh, then we have, now I added this perch, but I've done research and it says that actually you don't prefer to have those because that allows a handhold for predators to get to the birds and birds know this and they don't tend to like this so I still have the hole there if I want to add it sometime but I'm going to leave the perch off for now and we'll see what happens also because any good bird house needs a bird chimney I designed in a brick chimney using again the pattern tool around here that will glue on top just for looks it was fun and then I designed a bracket for the back side that screws on that hooks over the fence so I can hide these yeah so you can see here that's got a wedge on the inside that fits between the fence post that holds it in place so with these designed up I went and exported all these as STL files and sent them over to the printer and let's get those printed Okay, since we're using PETG, we're going to use our special side grip weld-on number four, which is great 
for welding PETGs and PETs in general. It's water-based. You're going to want to use a needle to apply it just a little bit and we'll let it set. Let that sit. Put that up a little hard. There we go. Okay, we'll let that sit and dry for a couple of minutes. We'll come right back. Okay, now we need to add the chimney caps to the top here. Same method. Okay, let that sit and dry. Okay, because we're using M3 screws, we're using M3 heat inserts to hold everything together so that we don't strip any of the plastic. Now, using calipers, the lead-in for the M3 heat insert is roughly 5.1 millimeters. So, because when you print, holes usually tend to come in a bit undersized, we're going to use our hand drill and a 5.1 millimeter drill bit and drill out all the holes to make sure that these heat inserts can get started and then we'll heat stake them in. Okay, so we've reamed out the holes. You need to ream out 5.1 on the bottom four. You need to ream out 5.1 on the top two of the house. And you need to ream out the four back ones on the back side of the bracket. Now, once we've done that, you'll note that the heat inserts press in and get started. The M3 heat inserts get started really well. Come back with a soldering iron and heat stake those in and all the spots we just reamed out. Okay, now that we have all the heat, heat inserts in, we have four here, we have four on the bottom, and we have one on each side of the roof. We need to go back with a 3.1 millimeter drill. Those M3 socket and cap screws are three millimeters in diameter. We need to go back and ream out the holes, the clearance holes, to make sure that they fit. So let's grab our 3.1, let's ream that out. Now, as you know, PETG can be a little stringy. Um, this is pretty good. I have a couple little wispy hairs on here. I want to make sure that those are gone. So if there is a bird in here, they won't get a hold of them. So I'm going to take my heat gun here and I'm just going to take care of those little wisps. All right, wisp taken care of, time for assembly. Okay, first let's assemble the bottom. Get all this started. tightening down the M3 screws, we have the bottom on the house. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to put the back side, the bracket, on the house. The reason why we're doing that first is we've got to put the screws in from the inside to the outside. So let's do that. For this part, I'm using M3 by 10s. Take it from the inside to the outside. Line up the hole. Start the screw. Okay. Do that for the other three screws.
Now with the four screws tightened, up on the inside we have the bracket put on. What's nice about this is, is if you want to hang it on something else, you guys can design your own bracket. I'll include the dimensions of the hole spacing in the bottom of this video and also in the Thingiverse link. So you can put on your own bracket. But for me, this is the bracket I need. Now that we did that, now we're gonna put the roof on. The overhang, there's a larger overhang, goes towards the front of the house, okay? And now we can use an M3 by six to install the roof. And there you have it. There is a fully assembled UV resistant PETG birdhouse. I think we'll go outside and go install it now and see how it fits. Let's go put it up. What do you think? All right, come on. About right here, what do you think? What do you think? Good? All right, we'll see how it does. So, that's the end of part one. That's building the birdhouse with PETG filament. It's now outside in the direct sunlight to see how the UV affects it. Uh, just once again, I'd like to thank IC3D Printers for sending me their prototype UV resistant PETG. Um, print wise, if you've printed with PETG before, in my experience from printing it, it prints exactly the same. A couple strings here and there for long distance travels, but other than that, it prints like butter. It has very little warp, it's a great material. Hopefully, they bring it out for everybody soon. So, if not, try IC3D PETG sometime. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, and we'll keep an eye on it for the next, who knows? We'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on it, see if any birds move in. And if they don't, or if they do, we'll keep an eye on, see what the sun does to it and report back. So until then, keep creating.